guys, it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. Today's video is a touch controversial, which I personally always love to film and also like watch as a consumer and the comment section is always incredible. That's right, today's video is going to be the anti-TBR tag, AKA popular books I just don't see myself reading. I did this video for the first time about two years ago and it just felt right for an update. I've come across new series I don't like and new releases that honestly just don't really pique my interest. Only felt natural to reapproach these questions with a new lens. I am gonna be trying to include only new books. So I will link my previous video down below if you want to see some other answers I've said in the past. Before we jump into the questions themselves, this is just my opinion. If you love these books, these authors, that's totally fine. This is just my personal preference based on my own taste. So please, please keep that in mind as we go along. I will also link the original creator down below, but let's go ahead and dive right in. Starting out swinging, the very first question is, what is a popular book that everyone seems to be reading and loving, but you just have no interest in picking? up. I actually have three books for this answer. Um, I'm trying to, you know, include more books than ever in this version of this video. Um, and the first one is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. This book is incredibly popular. I feel like it's all over book talk, all over YouTube, all over like the real world. And I'm sure everyone has seen the reaction videos to reading the story. Basically, everyone is sobbing their eyes out. And it honestly just does not look like an enjoyable reading process at all. Um, and honestly, I've just decided to remove this title. I know it's very lauded. I know it's won a lot of awards, but I just don't really see the point in reading something if it's going to ruin my life. I'm not sure. I've just decided a little life is just too much for me. I just can't take that much emotional distress when I'm just trying to relax. Um, again, I totally understand why people want to read this. I know it's many of my friends like favorite books, but for me, it's just too much and I don't really want to put myself through that. I've also read some very fair criticism as it relates to this novel and the writing. So I am also keeping that in mind as well in my decision to not read it. But that's right, you're never going to get a reading vlog of me reading a little life where I'm just sobbing for hours on camera. I just cannot. I don't think I would recover. That's really where I'm coming from. I don't think I would recover reading a little life. So I've just decided to unhaul it off my shelf and remove it from my TBR. Next up is They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. This is a really popular like YA contemporary romance. And this one honestly just comes down to genre preference. I'm not really a huge fan of very emotionally intense contemporary like romance fiction. Usually when I'm picking up romance, I like it to be light and fluffy, especially if it's set in like a contemporary setting. Also, I've just been reading less YA these days and I very rarely read YA contemporary now. I think the concept of this book is great. It's obviously super popular, um, but I just don't really think it's for me. So it's one I personally am going to pass on. And the last book that I feel like is everywhere is The Spanish Love Deception. I feel like I have read too many memes of direct text pulled from this book for me to take this reading experience seriously. I think the concept of this book sounds super fun. It's basically a classic setup of a woman has lied about a boyfriend. She's attending her ex's wedding and now she has to convince her kind of grumpy mean coworker to attend this wedding as her fake date. Um, I love the idea of it. I do need to read The Unhoneymooners, which is a book I'm interested in reading, but I've just heard too much direct text from this book for me to feel like it is a romance book that I personally would be interested in. Totally get why anyone would want to read this or love it. I just don't think based on what I've seen that this book would be for me. Next question is what is a classic or classic author that you have no interest in reading? And for this, I'm going to go with Walden by Thoreau because I just recently learned that this is essentially a scam. So Walden is classically that famous tale of this dude like going into wilderness, like writing off society to find himself and like become one with nature. But come to find out this dude really wasn't even in the middle of nowhere. His mom was doing his laundry and like cooking him food the entire time. And like he was throwing house parties. He's literally like the definition, some white dude doing the bare minimum and somehow receiving like lifelong fame for it. I learned that. I said, not for me. I'm not gonna pick that book up. Do your own laundry, my dude. You probably only have like three pairs of pants anyway. Next up is a contemporary author that you have no interest in picking up. I do have a few authors in this category as well. The first is Stephen King. I know. 
take a beat, take a breath. That is a very popular one to say. I have no interest in reading his books. I will say there is a bit of an asterisk there. There are a few fantasy series of his that I do want to pick up, but I will say the majority and the most famous of his works, I literally physically am just not able to read because I am a scaredy cat. It has nothing to do with Stephen King like as a writer. I just physically would not be able to take it. So novels like The Shining, Carrie, it, The Stand, Misery, the list goes on and on, would honestly just be too scary for me to read and I would have nightmares for the rest of time. So I would love to be able to enjoy these spooky Halloween good time that Stephen King often provides in many of his narrative tales, but I am too much of a wimp. And that is why Stephen King is on my list. Next, we have Lee Child. This is an author that I don't see so much online, but he is a super popular author. And I'm really including it uh, in this video for the sake of my mother, because my mom is a big reader too, but this woman loves a political international military thriller, and she loves Lee Child. And she keeps trying to get me to read his books. And I have read one for the sake of saying, I have read it, <laughs> but I can also say <laughs> definitively that I'm not really interested in reading any more of his books. I'm really sorry, mom. They're just not for me, but like, I hope you continue to enjoy them. But we can continue to have our book club on some other books, mostly memoirs. She also loves biographies, which I'm down to read. But international military thrillers, not so much for me. I'm also not a big serialized fiction person, and generally that also fits within that genre too. And the very last author I'm gonna include, which was also in my last video, is Colleen Hoover, the internet's pride and joy. She again is really known for writing like very emotional contemporary romance stories. And again, I generally just don't like to pick those style of books up. I really want escapism when I read romance, and if it's gonna be dramatic, I want it to be set in the past. I love light and fluffy. I just don't want to deal with like all of those issues when I'm just trying to read a romance story. This is 100% down to personal preference and what I like to read. Nothing against Colleen Hoover herself, but books like Verity and It Ends With Us will just not be gracing my channel, at least anytime soon. Who knows? Maybe I'll have a change of heart. Taste and preferences are constantly evolving, so. Never say never, but very unlikely. Next up, we have a problematic author that you have no interest in checking out their books anymore. First on this list, I have Jay Kristoff. Um, I've also read some of his books and generally I'm not a huge fan of his style and his character. So honestly, deciding to not carry on with any of his other series is not truly a big deal for me personally. The other author I have is Delia Owens, who wrote Where the Crawdads Sing. And her controversy is truly one of the most wild things I have ever read. Look it up, there is many an article written about it, but in summary, this author is eerily reflective of the main character of the book. And if you're not familiar in Where the Crawdads Sing, the main character is kind of like wanted or under suspicion for a murder. And the whole time you're reading it, you're trying to figure out if she really did it, yada, yada, yada. Well, in real life, Delia Owens can literally not return to an entire country because she and her family are wanted there for questioning in relation to a real murder. Like, I get right what you know, but that feels a little too close to home. So anyway, I'm not interested in reading um, that book. So that's my other answer to this question. This question is, what is an author that you've read a few books for and just decided that they're not really for you? For this question, I have just a variety of authors I would describe as like my original like YA reads. These are some authors I read many, many years ago. And honestly, at the time, I didn't really love their books and I really just don't see myself returning to either these series or perhaps their future releases. Again, things can change. If there's like an adult fantasy release, I'll probably check it out. But in terms of these series and any other YA editions, I'm not so sure I'm interested in. The first is Veronica Roth who wrote Divergent. I actually have never even finished Divergent, not even at its peak popularity, because honestly, it's just not really my style. I didn't love it at the time, and I have checked out some of Veronica Roth's like other works, and similarly, I just didn't love them. And then the other author I would mention is Kira Cass, who wrote the Selection series. Very similar story here. I read a few books within the Selection series many, many years ago and didn't really love it that much, and I don't see myself continuing on with this, though it has recently had a surge of popularity once again, which boggles my mind. But that is a discussion for another day, but I also just don't really see myself picking up any other books by this author. Next is a genre or genres that you are just not generally very interested in. I feel like I've already kind of covered this, but to recap, 
horror, though I will say my capacity for horror is slowly increasing and there are subgenres of horror that I do really enjoy. Um, things that are more suspenseful, kind of more atmospheric leaning, honestly historical or just like a certain vibe like gothic horror is something I can handle, but there are many books in the horror genre that are just simply too scary for me. So that is a pretty easy answer for me, but I really wish I could read more horror. It has nothing to do with the genre itself. It's just, I'm scared. Next is again, intense contemporary romance. I love fluffy romance. I don't want to deal with real world issues when I'm looking to escape in romance. I will read instead uh, like literary fiction or like very harrowing like fantasy when I'm wanting to deal with like more complex issues. Again, personal preference. And then lastly, I would say like serialized fiction stories. I'm not huge into series that are like 30 books long, kind of following the same character, mystery of the week. Um, I have enjoyed some of these stories in the past, but I always find myself kind of falling off of that genre. And generally when I find out that a series is that long or could be that long, I usually don't start. It's like more of a determent than something that is appealing to me. Next is a book that you've bought recently that you will never read or plan to unhaul. And for me, I think most recently, I would say Guild by Raven Kennedy. I started this book, but I ended up DNFing it and I will never finish the story. And I am looking to figure out like what to do with this particular paperback because I don't really want it on my shelf at all. I really did not like Guild. I thought it was very gratuitous and the trauma that it had on page. That being said, I did read book two and enjoyed it much more. So it's not a total diss against the entirety of this series, but for book one, I did not enjoy it and I don't particularly want this on my shelf. But if you're not familiar, this is like a fantasy romance series that is a retelling of King Midas. Specifically, this is set in a world where a king can basically touch things and turn them into gold. And our main character herself has been gold touched by this king and he views her as his prized possession and keeps her prisoner. So that's kind of the setup of this fantasy romance world. Um, the first one is just so dark. I didn't like it. It acts more as a prequel, but I did enjoy book two. So that's what I'll say about that. And the next is a series that you have no interest in continuing. I have a few here. The first is the Kingdom of Flesh and Fire series by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I had relative hope for this when I picked it up. It's kind of a clever reimagining of the classic vampires versus werewolf situation set in a more traditional high fantasy setting. But while the first one was like kind of boring, the second one was so boring. There's no plot. The same things happen over and over and over again. And when you pair that with very unlikable characters, it just, for me, did not land. I've been honestly having a really hard time finding like a fantasy romance sweet spot because I love like dramatic, angsty fantasy romance. It's one of my favorite things to pick up, especially when I'm feeling slumpy. But in my pursuit of this, I have read some books that just absolutely did not land for me. And this series is a good example of that. Next two will probably get me some distressed comments. So I understand a lot of people love these series, but again, personal preference. First, we have Game of Thrones, and this has nothing really to do with the series. I just simply have no faith it's ever going to finish, at least anytime soon. And I think my frustration with having spent so much time reading these books and then having such a terrible ending for the television show and then literally no progress, seemingly no progress on the book releases. I'm like kind of done with it. I'm like, I need a break from you. I need to take a step back. I am interested in the new TV show because I'm trash, but when it comes to this book series, I just don't even know what to expect. Like, is it ever gonna end? Obviously, if one day somebody actually finishes it and the entire thing is done, I will for sure check it out, but I really am not holding my breath for that either. So that's how I feel about that. And then lastly is a YA classic and that is Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo. I actually really enjoy Leigh Bardugo's writing and I will read any new stuff that she releases. I love the Six of Crow series. I love Ninth House, um, but I just didn't love the Shadow and Bone initial trilogy. Like when I read it way back in the day, I have thought about rereading it, especially because there has been some new releases kind of connected to that series, but there's just so many books to read. I just can't really bring myself to reread something I just thought was okay. Um, and I'm not so sure my feelings would really even change upon a reread. So I've just decided to leave it as such 
and let this series go. And the very last question for this tag is a new release you have no interest in reading. The two books I selected for this shouldn't be too much of a surprise given that the authors have already been present on this list before. The first is To Paradise by Hana Yanagihara. This isn't even because of A Little Life. This is more to do with the fact that I've just heard not so great things about this book. This is a story that's structured, I think, into three parts. Um, and I think the idea of it is really cool. It's like the same place through time, but I just hear like two thirds of it are just not very up to snuff. There's one story that is really engaging, but the rest of the book just wasn't so great. And I've had many friends that I trust their reviews so much say the kind of the same thing to me. So for that reason, I've just decided to pass on this book. But again, not really connected to A Little Life, but I do know many people have picked this up and are planning to read it, but I just will not be one of them. And then the second book is Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover. Again, I'm not picking this up for all the same reasons I've already explained as it relates to Colleen Hoover. I hope y'all enjoy it. I'm excited for everyone who's excited about this book, but it's just a release that I personally am not pre-ordering or am too excited about. But there are many other books that I have pre-ordered. In fact, my book hauls have been a little out of control lately. Alrighty guys, that is the anti-TBR tag. Please let me know down below a popular book that you personally have no interest in. I love reading the comments on videos like this. Just a reminder, this is just my personal preference and opinion based on my own reading taste. Nothing against these books or the authors I've mentioned in this video today, but I know that goes without saying. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you soon with another one soon. Bye.